All right, so nine four, we're really getting into uh, trigonometry, getting into trig here. And we've got a chapter or half a chapter on trig, and that's it. Once you get into high school, you're going to get, be dealing with a whole lot more on trigonometry. Um, we're just talking in general here, and I know I had you write down some stuff. Uh, today and tomorrow, we're talking about trigonometric ratios, trig ratios. We can always abbreviate that trig. Talking about trig ratios, and basically, it's just the ratio of the lengths of two sides in a right triangle. We're dealing only with right triangles here, and it's the ratio of two sides. The ratio is just a fraction, okay? Just a fraction. So we're creating a fraction based on side lengths of a right triangle, but it's going to be specific side lengths that we're looking at, and so that's where our different uh, the different names to these trig ratios come in. Okay, so the one that we have today is called the tangent ratio. And it's not an, a theorem, but it is a core concept. That's why I have to write down the core concept here. So this is our tangent ratio. Okay, our tangent ratio is defined as the ratio of the opposite leg over the adjacent leg. Tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. And we abbreviate tangent T-A-N, or tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. And when we talk about opposite, adjacent, and, and tangent, and the ones that we're gonna talk about tomorrow, we talk about, about all these, it's very important that we know which angle we're talking about first. Because depending on which angle we're talking about, the different sides are, or, or the opposite and the adjacent are different sides. So you have to know what angle we're talking about. Here, in this example, we're talking in terms of angle A. Okay, so in terms of angle A, this would be considered the opposite leg, because it's across the triangle from it. And then this would be considered the adjacent leg, because it is next to it. It is adjacent or next to that angle. Okay, so if I'm talking about angle A, opposite and adjacent. So if I have, let's say, a three, four, five triangle, because I know that's a right triangle. And they're asking me for the tangent of A. The tangent of A, and that's how we would write it, tangent of the angle, tangent of angle A, would be equal to the opposite leg divided by the adjacent leg. So it would be equal to 3 over 4. And it's the ratio of those sides. Any questions on that are very basic of tangent. Now, what if I asked you instead, if I asked you for the tangent of B? Now we have to look at angle B and think about what side is opposite of B and what side is adjacent to B. It's going to be a different fraction now. Right? What side is opposite? What leg is opposite of B? For the seven? Yeah. yeah, so the four, right? And then what leg would be adjacent then? Well, the three, right? So it all depends on what angle we're talking about. From B, opposite, and adjacent. We are never using the hypotenuse today, okay? We are not using the hypotenuse today. We'll use it tomorrow in our ratios. But today for tangent, it's simply the two legs and you just got to know which one goes on top. It's always the opposite one on top, then the adjacent. Okay. We got four over three. Okay. Good. So there's our basics on tangent. Okay. They're going to ask you basic questions, simple questions, just like that. Right. They're going to give us this triangle, they're going to ask you to find tangent S and tangent R, so they want both of them, 
and it says to write each answer as a fraction and a decimal down into four places. There were four places after the, the decimal. Okay, so I want you to do that. Create the fraction for the tangent and the decimal. We definitely need calculators for this. We're not, you say simplify the fraction? Yeah, simplify the fraction. You can leave it improper, right? If it's improper, but simplify. Wait, so we can end with it improper? You can leave it improper, but it needs to be simplified still. No mixed numbers. Because it's a ratio, right? It's, it's something compared to something else. Talk to somebody about it. What did you get for the fraction? The decimal. Yeah. 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 All right, here we go. Here we go. So, Bridget, uh, how about tangent of S? What's our fraction for tangent of S? Plus 40 over 9. 40 over 9. Okay, if we look at that from S, from S's point of view, this is opposite, this is adjacent. So, 80 over 18 simplifies down 40 over 9. Good. What about our decimal equivalent of that? Uh, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4. They wanted four decimal places, and that's going to be 4.4444. 4, 4, 4, 4. Okay. How about for tangent of R? Here. What do we have for tangent R? What about our fraction here? Hold. Nine, Nine over 40. And then what's our decimal there? Two, two, two. There you go. And they wanted four decimals. Let's give them four decimals. Let's put a zero. All right. Good. Any questions on our basic? Tangent. All right, so now the cool thing about uh, these trig ratios and what's really going to help us moving forward is your calculator knows exactly what that ratio should be, depending on what the angle is. So every time there is a, let's say, a 25 degree angle there, that ratio is always going to be the same. Okay, that ratio, no matter how big, how small, whatever, that ratio between these will always simplify down to the same thing. It will always give you the same decimal value. I want you to grab your calculator, find the tangent button, that's the T-A-N. Get that tangent, and then we put in a number of degrees. So tangent 25 equals, and that's gonna give you that decimal equivalent of that ratio. It's going to tell you what that ratio should be every single time we have a 25 degree angle there. And it ends up being, you know, 0.4663. But that's always going to be the case. Every single time we have a 25 degree angle, that's what the opposite divided by the adjacent is going to equal. Let's take one that we know. Nope, just tangent. I didn't put a minus one, right? Just tangent. Let's say it's a 45 degree angle. Why don't you type in tan 45? 
Tangent of 45 is one. Tell the person next to you, why does that make sense? Same. Okay, raise your hand. Tell me why does that make sense? Why does it make sense that tangent of forty-five is going to be equal to one here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the sides are going to be congruent in a 45, 45, 90. All right, we know those are x, x, and then x for 2. So if these are the same, anything divided by itself is going to give me 1. Okay. So anybody who types those into the calculator and does not get these answers out? Okay. Because there are different settings on your calculator. So if at any point you're getting these wrong and you don't understand why, let's take a look at your calculator. You might be on a wrong set. Okay. Completely fine. Nothing you did, right? Just if it if it doesn't work, then let's fix it. All right. So, like I said, that that calculator knows what those are going to be, what those ratios should be. Okay. So that is going to allow us to solve some questions like this. We're going to be able to solve for the length of x now. Because we can use that calculator to tell us what that ratio is going to be, right? That ratio for a 32 degree angle between the opposite and adjacent, we know exactly what that ratio should equal. So, what we can do is we can say, all right, tangent of 32 is going to be equal to 11 over x, because that's opposite over adjacent, right? Always opposite over adjacent. So I've got this. And then we can solve for x in this equation, right? Tan 32 is just a number. Tangent of 32 is a number. We could type that into the calculator, get that number, but it's a long, long decimal that doesn't end, doesn't repeat. Well, it might end and might repeat. But that tan 32 is a, is a long decimal, and I don't want to round that. Okay? I don't want to round a number inside of an equation before I get to the answer. So I'm going to do everything first before I run. I'm going to leave that as tan 32. I want you to talk to the person next to you. How can I get x by itself in this equation? How can I get x by itself? Okay, any ideas on how I can get X by itself here? X by itself. Bailey, what do you think? So if I divide by 11, I'm going to have a 1 over X here. And I don't want a one over x. I want just x. So good idea. That's not going to work here. Tyler, what do you think? I was thinking you could just consider that that angle could be at the other angle like eight times the size and the size of that. You could switch it and and deal with the other the tangent of the other angle. I don't want to do that right now. I want to learn how to do this so I don't have to do the work around. Any ideas? So we can't have the x in the denominator, right? We don't want an x in the denominator, so let's get it out of the denominator. What that means is I'm going to multiply both sides by x. If I multiply both sides by x, that's going to cancel out over here. I basically just move that x to the other side to get here. Well, now we know how to get rid of a times tan 32 if we divide by tan 32.
So to solve for x, to get x by itself, it's going to be 11 over tan 32. Okay, we can type that right into the calculator. Type in 11 divided by tan 32 equals. And then it says drop to the nearest 10. So we should get 17.6. All right, so this is going to allow us to solve for those sidelines. Now, let's say we go back to that problem, okay? Let's talk about the shortcut so we don't have to do this every time. Anytime you're trying to solve for the denominator, just switch places with what's on the other side. Okay, switch places by, with what's on the other side, and that's going to work every single time. Okay, so you try to solve for the denominator, switch it with the other side of the equal sign, and that's what it's going to be. Thank you to those of you writing that down. I thought that was important too. Okay, so these are the main types of problems that we're going to see today. Is they're going to give you an angle. They're going to give you one of the two sides. We need to set up that equation, right? Where tangent of something is equal to that ratio, and then we're solving for x. Good news about this type of stuff is I can just completely make up these problems, and it doesn't matter because we're just going to round the answer anyway. Nice. So let's say we've got a 35 degree angle here. Let's say this is X and this is 52. I want you to solve for X. I want you to round the nearest 10. So, person next to you, the setup, right? What's that equation? And then what do you get for an answer? All right, here we go. There you go. X is not the denominator here, so we're not doing that switching thing. What do we have to do to both sides to get X by itself? Got it? Multiply both sides by 52. All right, that gets that X by itself. All right, now let me show you something about your calculator. You can type this exact thing in. You don't even need a multiplication sign in between the 52 and the tan. You type in 52 tan 35, that's going to get that answer for it. What is that answer going to be when we round to the nearest 10? 36. 36.4. what? 36.4? Okay. All right, so as long as we put that number in front of the tangent that we're multiplying by, we don't have to use that symbol. We can just type in 52 tan 35. That's going to get us our answer. Okay. Good. Very good. Let's do another one. Let's go. Uh, Sophie, give me a number of degrees between zero and 90. 28. Okay. Question, give me a, a side length. Um, four. Four. Okay. Go ahead, solve for X. 28. 28 degrees. Here's that.
All right, so let's let's critically think here. Let's say I do this problem, I do all my work, I get 2.1. How do I know for sure that that is the wrong answer? Brandon? Because the longer life goes, the more potential. Exactly. Use common sense here, right? We know 28 across from the 28 is going to be the smaller side because this is across from a bigger angle, it's going to be bigger. So I know 2.1 isn't right. That would be if I switched that fraction, if I did it the wrong way. Okay. So use that information to help us. What do we end up with here, Luke? 7.5. 7.5. Okay. okay. Any questions on that type of problem? Again, that's the main type of problem that we're looking at today. Yeah. So it's always over It's always the opposite over the adjacent. Right, so we could do the same problem, right? But instead of a 28, we talk about this angle here, which would be what 62, and we could set up that same that same equation or get the same answer by setting it up. Tangent of 62 is equal to the opposite over the adjacent x over four. So four times tan 62 is also going to give me that 7.5. Okay, so it's got to be that opposite over. Here. All right, a couple of other things here to look at. They're going to ask you some questions where they say, use the special right triangle to find it. So this is without the calculator. So put the calculator down. We don't need a calculator for this. Anytime they say that special right triangles, you guys are talking about 45, 45, 90, or 30, 60, 90, which is why it's important to know those, the general form of those. Because now we're talking 30, 60, 90. They want the tangent of the of the 60. So we need to write in the general form. They didn't tell us how big any of these sides are, right? So we're talking general form. We're talking across from the 30 is x. This is 2x. This is x root 3. So we're going to use that to find the tangent of 60. So according to that 60, I've got my opposite over my adjacent. And then I'm going to simplify that fraction. X over X cancels each other out. The tangent of 60 degrees is square root of three. Okay. And that would make sense. If you typed in the square root of three, got an answer. You typed in tangent 60, got an answer. They would be the exact same thing. Okay. Because it follows that pattern, that general form of a 30, 60, 90. That is always going to be the ratio between this side and this side. But anytime you see that special right triangle, they're talking 30, 60, 90, 45, 45, 90. You got to set up the general form and go off of that. Last thing that we're going to look at is called the angle of elevation. Okay, angle of elevation, and I'll put that definition there for you. The angle of elevation is always the angle up from horizontal. So from horizontal up, it's your angle of elevation. So, all right, we could have an angle of elevation of a mountain, right? Where that mountain goes up, there's your angle of elevation. Angle of elevation, a lot of times, is what you're, you're looking at something, okay? So let's say that there's an airplane up there. There's my fancy airplane, right? There's our airplane, if our, we're standing down here, our angle of elevation is whatever this angle is for that line of sight up to the airplane. All right, so they might say that angle of elevation is uh, 40 degrees. Angle of elevation is 40 degrees. And then they might give you some other information that we can solve for. But for right now, we're just looking at angle of elevation, okay? Angle of elevation is from the horizontal up. Horizontal up is angle of elevation. Okay. Horizontal up. So then our 
one of our favorite types of problems here is we love to measure trees. We love to measure trees. But now we're not using shadows anymore, so that's good. All right, changing it up. Measure trees a different way. We're not even using a cardboard box this time. Crazy. So what we're doing is we're saying, all right, we're 45 feet away from the tree. We've got an angle of elevation of 59 degrees to that top of the tree. We should be able to solve for H. We got a right triangle. Why don't you go ahead and solve for H here? Set up that tangent equation and solve for H. I guess this one does say round to the nearest foot. So not to the nearest 10, but the nearest full number here. Check for somebody, see if they have the same thing. All right, we'll take a look at it. We got a right triangle. So we know we can use any of these trig ratios that we're going to learn. Today we only know tangent. So it's going to be tangent that uh, tangent of 59 is equal to the opposite, which is H, over the adjacent, which is 45. So we've got this setup. So we're just multiplying both sides by 45. We're typing in 45 tan 59 and rounding that. What do we end up with for our answer here? Less than 75. 75 feet. Okay, good. Any questions about our tangent? Always opposite over adjacent. Make sure you're looking at what angle you're talking about, opposite over adjacent. Because if you're talking about this angle, then we would set it up differently, right? If we're talking about this angle, then 45 is the opposite, H is the adjacent. So be careful on that. All right, bud.